two minutes ago. When you see the story about Kevin Brown, broken by awful announcing, and then elaborate details from our friend, your colleague, Britt Giroli, what was your reaction? And I specifically also want to hear your reaction to the clip itself, because everyone refers to graphics that are like that every day. Well, as for the clip itself, Scott, I had the same reaction you did. I kept looking for what the problem was, and there could be no problem. He wasn't criticizing the team, he was praising the team. So the whole thing just seems so odd and curious to me. But I've covered the Angelos ownership of the Orioles for a long time. I was at the Baltimore Sun when Peter Angelos took over the team in 1993. I was at the Baltimore Sun when Peter Angelos let John Miller go after the 96 season. And I was a columnist at that time. And that was about John Miller not bleeding black and orange. That was the phrase. Angelo said, I want our announcers to bleed a little bit for the home team. John Miller was and is a great play-by-play -play man and someone who was direct and honest and did not sugarcoat, but did not go out of his way to be negative either. So he was at the time quite a popular figure in Baltimore, as you can imagine. This guy went on to ESPN, to San Francisco Giants the next year, where he still is today, 27 years later. He won the Ford C. Frick Award for Excellence in Broadcasting from the National Baseball Hall of Fame. And so when this news broke yesterday, it just reminded me of that whole thing. Now, that was Peter Angelos. This is John Angelos. But it's the same family, and it seems to me, unless we hear otherwise, and we have not heard peep, out of the Orioles, this is the same kind of thing. The only difference is what Kevin Brown is alleged to have done was far less than anything John Miller did, and John Miller didn't do anything. So that's where we are. John Miller bleeds black and orange. I don't understand where they were <laughs> wrong. He he went from the Orioles to the Giants. It's Halloween every day for him. I mean, it's been <laughs> Halloween every day for him for 50 years. And his Birkenstocks and shorts, it was the greatest. He's one of the best. How can, how can the Orioles and Kevin Brown – I know he's coming back, what, Friday, they said? or isn't Yes, it Friday. This yep. week, right, Friday? Yep. How can he just come back on the air and say, okay, I'm back, guys, and everyone <laughs> – because the cat's out of the bag now, and the fans are going to tune in and say, oh, this is the guy that said good things about our team, and he was suspended. So, hey, welcome back, Kevin. We love you. Well, I can't speak for Kevin, obviously, but, AJ, you do this job. And I would imagine Kevin gets back on the air, conducts himself as he's always conducted himself, professionally, and makes no mention of this, nor should he. He should just go out and call Orioles games the way he has and the way he's entertained fans and informed fans for his entire tenure there. This guy is one of the bright lights of the business. I believe he's 32 years old, and look at where he is. So, frankly, as others have mentioned, the Orioles are lucky to have him. And he'll go do his thing and be Kevin Brown. The fact that this happened in the middle of a season, their best season in years, at a time when they are peaking, just goes to show the level of pettiness involved. This is not what you want people talking about or reading about. What people should be talking about is the team itself, their performance. And yet that is not the case here. To avoid this pettiness, should announcers not be paid by the teams? Eric, I can't really speak to that, and in so many cases, the teams have an ownership stake in the network or a partnership with the network, and that's why they have say. And in a perfect world, yes, everything would be independent and people could speak their minds freely. That's not the world we live in. So what you're talking about is an ideal, and that is not something that's realistic at this stage. It's just a situation where in so many cases, there is that strong tie, and yeah, the team does have a say over who its announcers are. It, and actually, if you think about it, AJ kind of touched on this earlier, it should, because the announcers are so closely affiliated with the team. In many cases, they are team employees. I get that. We all get that. Doesn't mean you can't have an objective booth. The Mets booth, for example, they will clearly point out anytime they see a problem on the field, off the field, whatever the case might be. Gary Cohen, Ron Darling, Keith Hernandez. There are other booths like that as well. And those booths have credibility. They are widely respected by the fans. 
The fans understand that they're not necessarily out there, the broadcasters, to rip the team, but they're going to say what they believe if a certain kind of play occurs or a certain incident occurs. That's what a good quality broadcaster does. The best teams in terms of their ownership with regard to this situation, they understand that. They understand that a Gary Cohen brings you a certain credibility that a pom-pom waving announcer would not. Ken, Hawk takes that personally, okay? <laughs> Hawk's a different category. <laughs> Hawk, but, I mean, we all love Hawk, and they, that's a whole different thing, and there's a place for those guys, too. Let's face it, and a lot of fans greatly enjoy guys like Hawk, and some fans, not all but some, much prefer that. They only want to hear the good. Listen, free country, everyone has their opinions, that's fine, but when you have a booth like, for instance, the Mets have, it brings a certain credibility with your fan base and it elevates your broadcast, quite frankly. Ken, that's why, as you know, as national broadcasters, when we go in and do a game, everyone thinks we hate their team because we're not, right. we're giving both sides. We're saying, hey, they're doing this well and they're not doing this well. This is why they're in first place. This is why they're in last place. So you get it all the time. You know it. I get it. You get it. Everybody, John Smoltz gets it. Joe Buck is famous for talking about it all the time, about how everyone thinks he hates every team in, on earth. And, and it's just it's just a weird thing. But the thing for me is the Orioles aren't the first team to do this. There's been other teams that have done this. The Angels did it, right, I think. The Diamondbacks had a weird thing with their announcer where he didn't wear the right shirt and he wouldn't say the right thing. There's been more than – it's not just the Orioles. Are we too sensitive as owners and teams and too controlling of how these people work? My answer would be yes. And – Again, AJ, when you conduct yourself as an ownership group in this fashion, and let's just stick to the Orioles for a minute, it reflects poorly on the Orioles. I don't know that there are many fans out there today who are saying, you know what, Kevin Brown deserved it, man. They stuck it to him and good. He shouldn't have said that. No. So who is the clown here? Who is the fall guy? It's not Kevin. It's the ownership. It's John Angelos. And ultimately... That is not a good thing. And I don't understand at times why owners don't see that. That there is a credibility associated with an objective broadcast that if they do interfere, it will be perceived in a certain way and not in a positive way for the most part. So I don't know the answer here. People are going to be sensitive. Owners in particular are going to be sensitive. I think we all understand that. But there's sensitivity and there's absurdity, and this was absurdity. John Angelos, he's just like us. Not, not He's the only <laughs> person who, who's looking at things that way. Now, last thing I'll say is what, what you mentioned, for every problem that you hear about that gets public, I promise you there are many, many, many stories just like this that don't get out.